Hello. Hey. What's up, buddy? To the live stream of consciousness. Hi. Yes. Welcome to the live stream. What's up, everybody? It took a long time, but I finally convinced my mother to come join us on the show. Oh, I'm so excited. She's, um, you know, uh, my my whole family, you know, we, we are all kind of confident and, and bold and strong. But I, I think we all also have a little bit of like, uh, who, me? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so humility, I'm, humility. Uh, being shy about it for a little bit, but we are going to have um, my, my mom live on the show in just a little bit. She's awesome. waiting backstage. But uh, first, as usual, hello to everybody out there. What's and, happening? What's up, Tim? I see Tim, uh, who is in Brazil, he was saying earlier. Oh, nice, nice, nice. He's, yeah. he's visiting his uh, his lady. Yes, um, exciting stuff. Awesome. I hope she's doing well and baby's doing well. Uh how are you doing, Michael Zinn? I am freaking doing amazing, man. I am just riding the universe like a bicycle these days. I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. What's up, Stevie Sage? Good to see you out there. Um, yeah, it's like, you know, just all the projects that I'm, I've been working on are coming to fruition. This uh, uh, Groundhog's Day, February second, is uh, the premiere of the uh, the Jackie Martling podcast that we've been working on so we made a website we made a youtube channel we did all the things that i do you know um and uh yeah and i'm super excited because it's like his story is really amazing he has a documentary out that i watched and uh we filmed um a bunch of stuff at the studio and it's going to be really good so that's coming out and then our friend brian uh lar uh who does the amazing tarot cards i i I just had this vision one night in my sleep or as I was in my sh actually was in the shower that I should put together a tarot reading show. Somebody reading tarot cards because uh -huh. everybody's reading tarot cards these days and online. And I'm like, why don't we do something really cool with Brian where he can actually talk about like the history of the things as they're happening. And he can like really explain like how to cleanse a deck and like open up a deck and charge it with your own energy and all of those things we were really getting deep into uh talking about what the show could be and he's super excited and uh so i built a um a website called the fool's journey and oh. it's so cool because he's got the most amazing artwork so for me to put together graphic design like this you know it's like super I easy yeah. journey. great choice yeah. there i finally was able this past weekend to give uh my decks to uh the ladies in the family my, my nice I, and this was a message from um from tanya cody's fiance basically just saying how much she loved them everybody loved oh that's them. amazing what's up sunshine uh -huh. i fi i figured tanya would definitely resonate with them for oh sure. yeah no they all were like these are really and I, I, I told them I'm, I'm jealous. I, you know, I bought them for other people because I wanted them for myself. <laughs> very, uh, very cool. And very. actually, before um, I think airings probably like an hour ago or something like that, I did a show. Uh, my buddy Brimstone, uh, who's a pro wrestler. You know what? You were supposed to give me the link because I you told me it was going to air today, and I googled I it myself it. and I listened to it. It was great, man. Oh, it was it great? It was pretty funny. What they ended up bringing me on because they've been talking about comic book stuff and they were looking for some perspective on comics hey yeah. how's it going <laughs> uh and um and i uh you know so i gave them some some of my thoughts on that and then they uh had me uh talk about alien stuff and uh you know more weird outlandish uh things and that was really um you know, it was very funny. I'm like talking about like fiction entertainment. Well, I heard, yeah, you were talking about the Thor comic and all of that stuff. Yeah. What's up, Taylor? What's up, Ninja? But I, I think the funniest thing is that you and I did the 24, not the 24 hour podcast, but the guy was trying to break the record last week. And yeah, we yeah, yeah. both the live stream of consciousness. And we heard back from his friend that we had like a very big reaction. Like He oh, said we got, he said 200 emails, but I, I have a hard time believing that. I think he meant like 200 said, comments and emails. He said half of them were like, these people are crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the other half of them were like totally interested. Yeah. interested in so if you're, if you're here from uh, Matt Napo show, Mind Dog TV, say hello in the chat and we'll. Uh, I we'll feel like that means, more. though, that we're doing something right, you know? Oh, absolutely. On that level. Absolutely. Oh, I was so excited. 
like I, I had a a a, a real well, I mean, a lot. I had a really deep uh, meditation this week, and um, and a, a lot of very major things, you know, came out of it. But you know, cool. one of them was just sort of this idea of like, you know, I, I think it's been said if um, if nobody is talking shit, you're doing something wrong. And and there's like some real truth to that. To like yeah. truly be in the middle is to sort of be guiding the middle of each side, the left and the right towards the center, right. and to be dealing with the flack of those furthest away from that center on either side. And, right. you know, so, I mean, really kind of, you do know that you're doing something, something right. You know, I it, feel like it, I, I definitely feel like ripples happen. You know, I've been, I've been like, a lot of people have been contacting me. Like I said, I created that show with Brian. I've been doing my own thing called The Moment. Um, I was just talking to Sunshine, mostly talking to Sunshine. And Sunshine brought one of her goddess group ladies on. And we just, you know, sa same kind of thing, talking about stories of triumph, but less about spirituality and more just about personal triumph, you know, yeah. and stuff. But it, it's just, it's been so much fun. And this platform has been so amazing. And, you know, I'm just... You know, I'm just excited to be here, and uh, especially tonight, man. I cannot wait to talk to Suzette Snyder. Yeah, and uh, we'll get to my my fabulous mother, Suzette. Hey, yeah, how are you doing? Tell, let's catch up with what, what you got going in just a second. Um, yeah, well, you know, like life is good. I'm I'm about to work on this spiritual. I mean, well, I'm making anything I work on it ends up being spiritual. But this uh, cool tabletop board game comic book that I'm working on for uh, Come On. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there's a lot of spirituality that's going into it because it, it it deals with like the seven sins and uh, and then I'm trying to counterbalance the seven sins with seven virtues and and looking like I'm literally doing builds for my characters right now just like trying to right but uh, you know so I've been doing a lot of different little soul searching also for myself too because I've been cool my health like I just went came back from a chiropractor today that did like X rays on me because I'm back in the gym you see me putting on some muscle uh and i'm trying to get back in shape so i've been really just like doing like all this like soul awesome here. yeah man and so much of of you know what i've I, I can't even say what i've come to but what i've been shown you know in, in like these deep meditations is, is sort of the way we are all math and i you know and before i bring on my mom i just want to sort of explain this mm -hmm. thing that i've given myself tonight you know, infinite space between when i was little uh, I was an atheist or an agnostic, and I was very terrified of oblivion. Uh, you know, and oblivion, for those of you who don't know that term, it's just the, the nothing, you know, an, an infinite nothing. And, you know, I think the word infinite gets thrown around sometimes, and we don't quite have the sort of the, the grasp of infinity, what that really means. And um, there's a thing, and, and I want you to try to try to follow this with me and try to be deep, you know. Think about this deeply. I don't know how deep I can go, Jesse. I mean, I'm a pretty shallow guy. Very deep. We can cut this pen in half, and then we can cut it in half again, mm -hmm. and then again, and again, and again, mm -hmm. again, and again, and again, and again. Eventually, it's going to get to a, a tiny little piece that we can't exactly see. But if we could shrink our perspective, if we could, if we could widen our perspective, we could see close. Still cut it down infinitely. Cut it half again and we could keep on doing that there's something called a mandelbrot set yep. where we'll have these uh, mathematical patterns and you kind of just keep zooming in all on about them. fractals my friend and and really what those fractals also are about is about perspective because right. the perspective that i have right now says this pen's about six inches right? right i can cut it in half it still is going to exist as i get smaller and smaller and smaller, right, and, right, smaller right. and smaller and smaller and smaller and essentially the the big you know like kind of mind blowing realization for me as I was understanding, you know, this sort of shrinking thing is that in between every two points, in between every word, in between two people, in between, you know, one thing and another thing is infinite space. This infinite space that you can't cut, that you can't stop cutting in half ever. It will never go away. It exists in between everything. So we're literally surrounded by an infinite emptiness that is yeah. everywhere. Every, every, every you, you're just, you're gazing into an infinite emptiness right. that your perspective is only allowing you to see in a certain, certain way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, you know, because it, it, it all came back to that age old question that I had when I was little, which was like, why is there anything? 
you know, and like, why isn't there just nothing? And and that that well, there is, right, <laughs> you know, right. that nothing is literally just sort of surrounding us. And um, you know, we we are connecting the dots and moving the thing forward. And maybe a higher degree of consciousness was like slowly gazing upon these pieces, recognizing that there was sort of a breath. And a lot of this also came from a little breathing exercise that I did the other day with my family. We ended up doing kind of a little bit of a healing circle thing. I was oh cool moving some energy with my family, and my 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 uh, my sister in law was helping me. No and, plant medicine involved, just pure meditation yeah, yeah. and breath. And, and basically, I, I'm just curious. I was told to stop my breath. You know, like like you breathe in and then stop. Okay. You breathe out and stop. Like and that there was a rest, and that I was as a person, and I think many of us are probably guilty of this, I was rushing through that process. Mm, that there was, you know, at the top, like, like, like if, you, if you're on a roller coaster ride or something like that and it swings you up on a pirate ship, you know, there's that moment of weightlessness, you know, like where you're just kind of floating in right. air. Right, and right. then it swings down the other way and then there's a moment of weightlessness there and then swinging back the other way. And that I was rushing through this space and that this space was the observing space. You know, it was the space to approach. Such an interesting it. perspective, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, as you go up and, you cool. in and you're appreciating, you know, this breath, you know, and, and how wonderful it feels to breathe it in. And then you, you let go of that breath and you appreciate the life force and, you know, what you've gotten from that breath. And then on to the next. But right. most of us are just kind of... Right, 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 right. It's the yeah. space, the infinite space in between. Yeah, and that infinite yeah. space in between, it, it's Great. really, it's, the, it, it's there to allow our perspective a moment of appreciation. I'm, I'm and starting it, to get used to your changing names and the significance of them. I, at first I was like, oh, that's so silly. But now it's like, <laughs> as, you, as you're growing and changing, you're becoming a different person. Yes, yes. Awesome. It, it, you know, I, we talked about that the last week, I think that I think it was actually Brian who mentioned it to me and kind of just that perspective, that infinity, the idea of infinity, which you usually think of expanding outward also goes inside. So as you learn yourself, as you create your own universe, it's infinite, you know, inside. We talked about that. And it's weird because I chose this background today. And if you notice, one of them spirals is going infinitely out and the other one is going infinitely in. Yeah, pretty you know, damn cool. The last thing that I'll say, like, you know, kind of in terms of that, of like one of the things that I, and it w wasn't just this meditation that I had, but I've seen it a few times now. Um, the, a torus is a, is a shape that, you know, you see, uh, which could best be described as like an apple, you know, where, right. the, where the stem comes from is the center and the, the, the center of it. And, you know, it goes the all of, the shape out. of our aura. Right. So you can look at this torus shape and you can kind of see it like it's expanding. It goes up. Things go further apart. And then eventually they come back together. But basically what I saw in addition to the torus shape was this shape that was outside of the torus shape that was sort of like pressing up against the torus shape. It was like it was the the case for the torus. Like here's the torus and ah, then over the torus cool. is the shape. And while this thing's going like this, that thing's, you know, it, it's being mixed around too wow. by the movement yeah, yeah. And all these things. Very and cool. it just, you know, adds more to that sort of everything is getting infinite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like a water, a waterfall and all the waters falling into its place and being shifted around and sorted and then, you know, coming back into its source. Wonderful. Anyway, That's fucking awesome. Um, you know, for, for me, you know, I, I've, I've always found these thoughts to be very stirring and, and, and they might stir up different things in your mind, in your heart than they stirred up for me at the various times that I have, um, you know, have uh, have thought of them or whatever but uh you know hopefully that speaks to some of you guys and um do we have my uh my absolutely my... we've been keeping her waiting way too long okay. hopefully she's not sleeping. Us, please uh before i bring her on let me say suzette snyder is not just my mother and the 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 mother of my fabulously talented siblings uh she is a fashion designer she left the house uh, at 16, so she'd go to FIT and graduate um, from the Fashion Institute of Technology, um, where she, uh, you know, learned. She was already a fine artist, and she went in to learn about designing clothes. But she is somebody who has then gone on to get um, not degrees, but her license for a number of other things. I, I don't know if I'm going to get them all right, but she's got her barber's license. She's got her beautician's license. You know, she is a a fine artist who. Um, got herself schooled in every area 
but is just a naturally brilliantly talented artist who designed all of the costumes for Twisted Sister. Many the of them style, from yeah. the eighties. You know, she gave them their whole look and you know the cool bone logo that's Twisted Sister. She she drew that even though she doesn't like to take credit for that. Um, but she mm-hmm. is the special effects makeup artist for all of my brother's independent films that he's yeah. made. Yeah, she, that's what Steve she, just said. I learned so much working yeah, with her. He's an incredible professional yeah. makeup artist who's done makeup for huge stars, for press junkets and, and newsmen and all these things. She is an artisan artist, and she's somebody who always, um, you know, is very willing to give her wisdom kindly to those around her and awesome. uh, lights up every room she's in. That's why I'm super excited. Can I bring on my mother, Suzette Snap? Yes, absolutely. Welcome, yeah. Suzette, to the show. Hello. Thank hey! You oh, I'm super excited. I I wanted to add to what Jesse was saying that uh, I've always had an admiration for you just just from meeting your sons and working with your sons because they're just all amazingly talented and super humble and have great manners <laughs> and are just you know a, a amazing and you know being a fan of D and just having worked with the other Snyders it's just it's all amazing and now actually working with D indirectly through through Danny but yeah man amazing job Suzette with uh with who you are and what you've become and I'm super excited to have this conversation with you well, let's hope you feel this way after the interview is over. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. So, Jesse, do you want to uh, ask our traditional question, or do you want me to? So, Mom, yeah, you you, you do it. So, so it's, you, 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 you give it to her. <laughs> so, so the live stream of consciousness is just all about kind of being aware. It's kind of about being aware that you were looking at the world one way at one point and seeing the world differently. Um, what is your definition of the word consciousness? Uh, my definition is consciousness is everything and it's all how it's connected and how it is reflected on everything around us and within us. Mm-hmm. And the more enlightened we get, the more conscious we get become. Mm-hmm. Can you um, uh, give a, elaborate on the how it's reflected at us? That's the first time we got that word. I know what you, I know what you mean, but I would love to to hear you say. Well, there's different levels of consciousness. Some people are not conscious at all, you know, and then others are ones that walk down the street and notice, you know, the blue sky and the sun in the sky and the flowers and the trees and you know, and that is pretty an amazing gift that God gives us every day. But unfortunately, we walk down the street usually and we're looking at the floor, the cracks in the cement and not focusing on the beauty all around us. Mm. That is pure consciousness. That's great. That's awesome. Totally different than we've gotten. And, And I love that idea of like you said, people who are kind of at certain levels, it's like first first you notice the sky is blue, then you notice the birds are singing as you're walking by them, and then you notice all these things, and it becomes this bigger infinity of awareness. Our Very cool. to me is everything is connected, and we're all one, and we're all connected, and we just got to kind of open up our hearts and understand that. Mm-hmm. You know, we're all one, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, a lot of us aren't getting that these days. Absolutely. We talk about that all the time. We actually talk about more about how we're all one. We don't, we try not to focus on, unfortunately, how most people aren't getting it, but you're right. It's, you know, that's why we're doing what we do to kind of hopefully just have conversations and reach people and, and let them see how easy it is to understand. It's just all about love, right? Well, the funny thing is we all think we're different, but in the big picture, we're all the same. We're all dealing with the same stuff, but Instead of us fighting against each other, we should be fighting with each other. And not not even fighting, just loving each other and having compassion. And that's right. really the key. So you got a lot of love here. I just want to pop it up on the screen, give some acknowledgement. We've got Leela saying welcome. We've got Angela saying welcome. We've got Taylor welcoming you. You are so welcome here. I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this day. I want to uh, expand on a couple of the things that you said here, Mom. Uh, you know, the, the talking about the reflectiveness and that, you know, we're all generally going through the same things. You know, I think that's that reflective thing of, of 
you know, even if you aren't going through the same thing, you might be going through the same thing in a different way, you know, in that polarity swing, you know, you're, you're in this side of the coin and they're on another side of the coin, but essentially struggling with the answer, you know, can go a lot of different ways. And the thing that you said about, I just, I think it's such a beautiful um, metaphor. You said looking at the cracks in the sidewalk instead of looking at the blue sky. Now, the blue sky is a naturally occurring thing that is there and it's always perfect. The cracks in the sky and the sidewalk, that's what? A metaphor for the things that man makes that is imperfect, you know? And, uh, you know, and, and even where do the cracks in the sidewalk come? The cracks come from that perfect thing trying to, you know, get our attention and, uh, you know, break through. So what, what a beautiful metaphor that is. <laughs> well, I'm glad you appreciated it. <laughs> Very cool. So, I, I mean, Jesse, I don't know. I mean, I don't mean to take a lead here, but I've been talking so much on these platforms. Oh, you do? Um, uh, Suzette, I know Jesse has told us a little. I, I, I've been fascinated hearing... Uh, the stories from Cody and Shane, um, and even um, what's uh, what's Cody's fiance Tanya. Tanya. We had Tanya on the show, and those stories were amazing. But Jesse talks often about how the family goes to Peru and kind of does these healing ceremonies. I would love to hear the before and after for you. Um, probably, I'm thinking the first time, or you know, the most significant difference that you noticed when you said aha we are all connected i don't know if that happened right away or why don't you tell us a little bit about that experience okay uh all right this story's kind of long you want the long first absolutely that's what we always ask for okay well um okay oh god i don't know where to begin i'll start off with this is that my whole life I, my identity is that somebody who doesn't do drugs and I don't drink, I've never smoked pot mm -hmm. and that is who I am. And I am very proud to be that because I come from a family of alcoholics and drug addicts and, uh, you know, abuse with drugs. Mm -hmm. And I decided at a young age that that wasn't the road for me. And my whole life, I have been very straight. And I raised my children like that as well, right, Jess? Mm -hmm. You know, for me, that was, you know, stay away from pot, stay away. Yep, from that's very respectable. And he talks about it all the time. And it's, you know. So when I met Dee, uh, Dee had the same kind of belief system that I did. And that was a big thing of who we are as a couple. Mm -hmm. You know, Dee's a rock and roller who doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't, doesn't do anything. And myself as well. And um, what happened was my life uh, fell apart. My mother died unexpectedly at a really young age. And then I, my whole family took it really hard. I was very close with her. She was my best friend. I used to talk to her six times a day. And uh, the day before she died, she was cleaning for my a visit that my brother was coming over to see her. And my mother was the dirtiest person you ever met. Like her dogs used to come in from outside to shit in her house. That's how dirty her house was. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, she was, how you really feel, Mom. That's dirty. She was leaving. She was cleaning for my brother's visit, and she called me up and she was like, "I can't breathe. I, I don't feel good." I said, "Stop it. Nobody's ever died of cleaning before." Cut the shit, you know? Wow. So the next day I called to see how she was doing and she died overnight. And it was devastating. I can't, and, I can't uh, even imagine. My, my whole family like kind of fell apart. And then a little while later, my brother winded up getting murdered. And that's a very, a different, very long story. And before that, he was trying to commit suicide. Uh, he tried to commit suicide three times. And wow. we're very close. My family is very close. And at one point, I said to him, Vinny, I, I can't do this. If you commit suicide, that's just going to push me over the edge. I'm already, you know, walking that ledge. I mean, I every day, all I would do is cry. I would lay in the bathtub. I would have a hard time getting up out of bed. I was just a freaking mess. 
And um, my brother promised me he wouldn't commit suicide. And then he, I believe he set up uh, a way of getting himself murdered. A friend of his put a hit on him. And my brother was murdered in Manhattan in broad daylight. And um, shortly after that, my third brother committed suicide. Mm -hmm. Couldn't handle, you know, everything that was going on. And I just fell apart. That was just, I just went into a really bad state. And I have always been a strong one in the family. So, you know, Dee has been up, down, all around. And I've always been, you know, the rock that held it together and was strong for everyone. But this time it was my turn. To fall right. But I didn't realize that I was the thing that was holding my family together. And when I fell apart, he fell apart with me. Mm. He didn't know what to do to hold things together. He just, he didn't know. He didn't know how to function. You know, the person that's always there for him is now a mess and he didn't know how to deal with it. Right. So I was seeing a psychiatrist and all I did was cry at every session. Mm -hmm. So um, she kept trying to force me into taking antidepressants. And I have always been someone that's been totally against uh, pharmaceuticals. You know, to me, they're drugs, just like any other drug I, that is not for me. Right. So she, this went on, I don't know, months now, and I wasn't getting any better. I would go jogging, and during jogging, all I would do is cry the whole way. And um, so one day I was yelling at Cody for something. I don't know what it was, cleaning his room or whatever. And he turned around and he pulled me a little tick. And I looked at myself and I said, is this what I became? I, I, I'm a lunatic. And my whole life was, I gave up my career for my children and they became my career. And my identity was that, as far as I was concerned, I was a great mother. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I realized I'm not a great mother anymore. Mm -hmm. I'll like, cry all day, I'm in my room all day. I'm not a great mother. So I said, okay, uh, you know, I got to fix this. So I went to the psychiatrist and she put me on antidepressants. And I was on the antidepressants for about a week. And I said, what, what the hell am I doing? I don't need antidepressants to get me out of this. I could do this. I don't need no freaking drug to get me out of it. I could do this. And I started looking for all different alternatives to get me out of the hole. And I started reading a book by George Anderson, uh, Lessons from the Light, and that like really made a difference to me. And there were a couple of things that were really haunting. My mom had did a lot of things in her life. I mean, she was an alcoholic, and she had did a lot of things in her life that I questioned. And my brother Vinny wasn't the um, the wasn't the best person in the world. He did some things that weren't great. And I had this inner fear of both of them going to hell because I was raised as a Catholic. I was a Catholic. And um, so I had these like these things that were I was worried about them, where they were gonna go, once they passed. I I had all these like fears about them. And I realized that I was being selfish that they were in a better place, but I missed them and I wanted them back. And I said, you know, I'm not going to be selfish. They're in a better place. I, right. I got to deal with this crap. Right. I started like reading all these spiritual books. I started meditating. I started going to yoga classes. I just started all these holistic things. And right. And my journey evolved. And I started every time my brain started going to that path of sadness and depression, I would switch it to a positive thought. I would switch it to mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. my brother in a better place they're together, they're with each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had so many deaths in my family, like a lot. Right. And they all died at a young age. And I would try to turn it around and make it positive. And eventually I got out of it. Uh -huh. And I started on this path, on this, you know, on this journey, on this spiritual journey. And my meditation, I started doing TM. And as I'm doing this, my kids are coming along with me with the path, you know, on the path. Mm -hmm. So, especially Cody, you know, him and I, I remember him and I going to, you know, TM classes 
And then right. he found out that they were charging like three thousand dollars for a meditation class and making me sign a consent form not to share anybody the technique. I was like, How's that for spiritual? Right, anyway, right. Very short. Um, I got wind of my two sons, Cody and Shane, going to Peru on a spiritual retreat. So they tell me they're going on this. For a long time, I've been wanting to go on a spiritual retreat. Mm-hmm. And I said, I want to go. And Cody and Shane are like, no, ma, no, you don't you don't want to go here. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> go, yeah, yeah, I want to go. I want to do this. I want to do this a long time. They go, no, no, ma, you don't get it. You don't understand. You don't understand what this is. And they're trying to explain it to me. And it was an ayahuasca retreat. I didn't right. know what ayahuasca was. I don't know what anything is. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to hear it. I said, I don't want to know. I'm just doing it. And my, my kids are going, Ma, Elite, you know, do something. Smoke a cigarette. Smoke pot. Do something. <laughs> you just can't go to Peru and do ayahuasca. And this I'm like, a big leap. I'm going, I got this. I'm going, right? So I, I already booked a trip. I go. I book everything. The kids go. They come back. And I am blown away by everything they they're experiencing but i still don't understand what it is mm-hmm. and they're trying to explain it to me but i literally have earmuffs on my ears because i was afraid if they told me like if they mentioned the word psychedelic i would never have went and i because i had these conditions in me and i knew it would stop me and i right. had to do so i'm going nothing's going to stop me i'm doing this and so they, they keep trying to warn me, and literally, my, I got earmuffs on. So, okay, the day comes two weeks later, I'm heading down. Now, I already have this love and this respect for this medicine that I know nothing about. And I'm heading down to Peru, you know, I had to go, go to Peru, and I, you know, it was a big deal. It was like 27 hours, all these connections, blah, right. blah. Blah, blah, blah. We finally get to the small airport where we have to get on like a small charter flight and fly to the jungle. And I'm on this flight with about, I don't know, 38 hippies. You know, they're all wearing their Crocs and their shorts and, you know, and they're all like in their 30s and 20s. And here I am 50. I'm 50 and I'm wearing a designer jumpsuit, <laughs> high heels. A leopard suitcase, you know, and um, and they're all like looking at me like, "What's this lady doing on this plane?" You know, and I'm like kind of chuckling to myself, going, "I'm seeing what's going on." And they're all talking about this thing, ayahuasca. Mm-hmm, I have no freaking idea what ayahuasca is, you know. Right, right. So uh, we get we land in the airport and we get out, and there's a bus picking us all up. And I go and I follow and I go on the bus and somebody looks at me and he goes, lady, are you sure you're on the right bus? And I go, Spirit Quest? And they go, yeah, Spirit Quest. They say, yeah, I'm on the right bus. They, they, they look at me like, okay. You know, so I get on the bus and I'm quiet and everybody's talking, talking, talking. And I'm just quiet listening to all the conversations. And get to this area where you, you board a boat and now you're taking boats down the Amazon River. This is exciting. This is like an adventure. It was unfucking believable. <laughs> I'm on the bus. I'm like, how come they didn't tell me about this? There's like natives on the, you know, the shoreline washing clothes with their breasts, on, just like you would see in a magazine. I was like, this is incredible. Right. And you I, were enjoying it. You weren't afraid of it at that point because oh, you, well, you would be meditating like, and everything. I'm one of those people that I'm not really afraid of much, you know? So, and I'm just like, hey, look, I'm married to D. I can't be afraid of anything. (laughs) So, uh, you know, so I'm like, okay, this is really cool. When we get to the place, it's off the side of the Amazon River, and we get out, and I see now why everyone's wearing, you know, uh, Crocs, because you're, you're stepping into dirt. It's the Amazon jungle. So there are snakes around. There's zillions of bugs. You're in the freaking jungle, right? right? I look at myself. I'm like, mm, yeah, I definitely am not dressed for this. I hope I brought the right clothes. You know, I didn't know what I was getting myself into here. But I kept an open mind. And I said, you know, I'm just 
whatever it is, I'm doing it. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to question it. I'm just doing it. And that was my state of mind. No matter what it was, I wasn't going to think about it. I was just going to die. Yeah, that, that's that's part of why it worked, I think, is that intention. You know, you went with the intention of. I was completely open. Meeting then, it head on, yeah. And then I still didn't know what I was in for. I, right. I, I had no idea what I was in for. And I didn't really find out what I was in for until the first ceremony. And then it was like, holy fucking shit. I mean, I was in the jungle for two weeks and I did so many psychedelics. It was, it was, um, it was two weeks, two weeks worth of doing, doing ayahuasca. No, one week ayahuasca, a week of wachuma, and then there was all these other medicines. Oh, okay. Some of the other, other types. Like, right. Wachuma is like peyote. Right. But and everything it, everything completely organic, all or in organic ceremonies. and. Oh, yeah. It was really beautiful. Like yeah. every other ceremony day, like you would have a day of rest. Uh, Donna Howard, he would take you to, he was like connected to all the tribes in the area. Mm-hmm. And you would go to visit a tribe, and it was so magical and so spiritual and wow. it was just really incredible and right. so i went from never doing any drug not even smoking pot to going straight to doing all these crazy psychedelics right and sunshine I, sunshine just said this story needs a movie i love it and and i was thinking the same i'm like she's I was working on her book can, can we do a, a reenactment of this like this should have been all documented this is amazing so go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Susan. No, 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 it's okay. So actually, my third ceremony of ayahuasca showed me a photo. It's really, you know, what's really amazing is Can that... Just, this that? Like, just, just for the audience who doesn't doesn't know what well, like ayahuasca is. Right. So ayahuasca is a tea. And our first day there, we, made, we make it. And you go down mm-hmm. to another side, Maloka, and you do your first ceremony, and you, it's the making the ayahuasca, which is a brew. It's a, um, it's a, it's root, and you make a tea, and you put your intentions in it, and they do a tobacco ceremony. Now I hate cigarettes, and my first thing was I had to smoke tobacco. I was like, okay, here goes nothing. And the most amazing thing is I'm sitting there smoking tobacco. And I see my mother, the ghost of my mother. I'm, I'm like, going to cry just saying this. I oh, see she comes over to me and she puts her hand on mine and she says, I'm here with you. And I just burst out crying. It, it was just so unbelievable. And um, it was, I'm, I'm crying as I said. But uh, anyway. Amazing. Yeah, cry. It's amazing. Yeah, so now, as the ayahuasca sits, it gets more and more potent. And um, it gets stronger and stronger. And this is the worst tasting crap you could ever taste in your life. My fourth ceremony, I almost threw up on the shaman. So that's how bad it tastes. Am I but weird it, that the taste doesn't bother me particularly at all? What was that? I said, am I weird that the taste doesn't really bother me? <laughs> yeah, you are weird. Maybe I, you damage those taste buds. Yeah. Welcome to my cup. <laughs> I, I love the fact that you you make the tea and connect to it before you you do it. That's that's amazing. It's incredible. I think I'm used to it from past lives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. So anyway, on my third ceremony, she shows me an image of a little girl walking down the street, and I'm following behind her. And the little girl turns around and it's a young me. And she says, tell your story. It will help people. And I'm like, damn, you know, I'm good at so many things. But writing is not one of them. And she's telling me to tell my story, you know. And ah, the book that was mentioned, I get it now. Yes. And the funny thing is I'm Italian and you never talk crap about the family. You know, that's right, like, right. like literally mafia connected. My uh, godfather, uncle, is like a famous hitman. <laughs> and it's like, you never talk crap about family. Right, 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 of course. I talk about my family. So uh, so anyway, I've been writing it for the last two years, and it's, it's really amazing. That you felt that in order to tell your story, you would inadvertently speak crap about your family? Well, you told the story, <laughs> Jesse. I don't have to, like, so, um. Forgive me for a moment. I'm totally being a fanboy. I really wish you you would come on video, but I, I just appreciate you being here. I just want to take a picture of me in, with this with you on our show. 
<laughs> I just want to send it to someone. Someone, someone's calling me, so I'm like, no, I'm sorry, I've got more important things going on right now. <laughs> um, th this is really Steve Sage. Yeah, this is this is an amazing experience. I'm so honored to have you sharing it with us here on the live stream of consciousness. And, and like I said, your son is it, all of your sons, but my relationship with Jesse and getting to know him has been amazing. And, and, you know, I mean, I definitely attribute that to, to you and everything that we're connected to, you know, I think that's uh, it's, it, this is amazing. So, so continue telling us about uh, where you are. Cause I mean, I, I feel like we're with you. We're following you from, you know, Long Island to Peru. Uh, so, okay, a couple of like important moments. Yeah. So, you know, here, here we are. I'm here with 38 people from all over the world. And, you know, when you first get there, you talk to these people and you give a little why you're there, a little bit about yourself. Mm -hmm. And you become very attached to these people. But I quickly learned that this place was like a hospital. These were a lot of these things were the last resort for people. A lot of people had cancer, they had diabetes, they had, you know, a suicide attempts, all kinds of things like this. And I found myself going, oh my God, like, how can I ask, you know, Mother Ayahuasca for my intention where I don't have any of these problems? I'm blessed. I'm, you know, I have a great marriage, I have great children, I have everything anyone could ask for. And I did have some like little health issues, you know, but nothing like what these people were coming for. Right. So it took like days for me to like, because you're supposed to go up and give your attention, what, your intention, what you want. And I, I couldn't bring myself to ask for anything. Mm -hmm. And every ceremony, she blew my mind. And my first ceremony, she blasted me into out of space. I was on my spaceship. I met my alien friends. It was just in freaking insane. And I, every ceremony, I would come back with these like insane stories and everybody else had these traumatic, traumatic, like, you know, experiences. And they, that's the point they hated me because they didn't want to hear my stories anymore because <laughs> they were so jealous of my stories. Right, and right, right. It was because I came in there not knowing anything. I wasn't afraid of the medicine. I, I was right. open. I wasn't stopping anything. I was just letting it do its thing. And where everybody else, I think, knew about ayahuasca, I didn't. So they came in with all these fears that were, like, intertwined in it. And those fears manifested on their experiences. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of truth to that, too. I mean, like, you know, because you guys, you guys did it before me. Now, um, I don't know if I told you this before, but, you know, when I did mushrooms for the first time, which I, I did that prior to the family opening up more and going down this route. But I did so much research at the time because, you know, as you said, our whole family, we didn't, we didn't drink, we didn't do any drugs. I didn't do that until I was 29 years old. You know, so I was, and I spent a long time researching everything I could find on these psychedelic drugs to know exactly what I was getting into and have a very controlled experience. In my mind, I was going in with a clipboard and a pen and I was going to go, make my notes about the thing, you know, and, and my mind was blown, you know, doing mushroom. But when I read about ayahuasca, if you sit and read people's stories, oh my God, it is so easy to get scared, you know, because there are just such deep and interesting. I feel, more, I feel so much more intrigued than scared though, just because I feel like. Well, you story, had like, some good introductions to it. Yeah. You, yeah. You sure, were to just stories. go on the internet yeah. and like the things that you will come away remembering, there's, right. there's some really scary things. And, and, oh, yeah. and it's nice to say, it scared the shit out of me. And I went, all right, I'll try some mushrooms, but I don't know about that ayahuasca. Right, I'm right, right. Do that. And then, you know, my family went to go do this. And I'm like, really? You're doing that? Like, I, like I'm kind of slightly terrified of doing that. <laughs> and, you know, it took me a second. And after really hearing all of the positive experiences that everybody was having, that I went, well, I'm sure this is just an extension of these other psychedelic right. experiences that I've had that have been so positive. But it is very easy to to program yourself into thinking yeah. Yeah. that an ayahuasca experience has to be a lot of suffering. So sure. I would imagine, actually, that your open mind and willingness to just go with it probably Absolutely. did yeah. to yeah. guard you from any sort of negative experience. Yeah. yeah. So um, on speaking about what you were saying, and I, um, 
I don't know if I should tell this story, but I'm going to tell this story. So oh. I've done ayahuasca about 38 times now. And okay. I don't really need, I don't, I only go back now to bring people. And people, I don't know why they feel more comfortable with me there because I guess I'm yep. an old woman. I think that's a part of it. Yeah, I think that's I a part of it. I bring them to the medicine, you know, like Cheyenne, my daughter, you guys had Cheyenne on the show. Mm -hmm. She dealt with depression, really bad depression. She wanted to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. I literally dragged her down to Costa Rica and her and I did ayahuasca together. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've done ayahuasca together at least 20 times, maybe right. more. Right. And, and it's actually amazing because we, as my family, myself uh, and all my kids, not Jesse, but my other kids, we all go to ceremony together. Right. And what's amazing is that we inspire, I inspire the people there because they're like, I wish I could bring my I'm mother, my father. Change, yeah, they're change, changing people's lives, you know? I mean, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's about the demographic that, you know, she she's not exactly yeah. representative of your average. That's, a, that's so cool. Yeah. You know, people get inspired. They go, well, maybe I could talk to my mom about you this. Should, you should start a, like a foundation, you know? And, well, uh, actually, this is what I'm trying to do in the book. I'm trying... You know, to me, you know, to me, the word psychedelic to me is still a drug. It's I don't, scary. I don't yeah, call, it's scary. I call this medicine. I do yeah. not. When you see how many people that it has helped. I mean, yeah. Cheyenne is like, a, I sent Cheyenne to this center uh, got a, year, a year and a half ago. She got stuck there during COVID. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember oh, these yeah. appeal. Yeah, she was she was bad, and yeah. we we had to send her down there. She's like a different person now. Oh and she God. got she got stuck there for a couple of weeks, right? So she oh, was like, yeah, it was we literally had to get like the army in there to go. Know, it's funny. Steve says it scares the shit out of me. I'm trying to put that up, and and I could certainly understand that. I think there's a lot of connotation of people doing psychedelics, like you said, using that word, who come back and they're kind of like you know twitching and like acting different, but. I've, I've seen a lot of people. There's a guy, I forget his last name, Aubrey something, Aubrey Mann or something, who does a podcast. Super, super intelligent, like, you know, like Joe Rogan and Russell Brand, but less controversial and more like down to earth. And he's super intelligent. And he talks about how he's doing, he's been doing it for 18 years and he's still doing it, you know, all the time. And he's just amazing to listen to speak because he's so insightful, you know? So. Okay. So uh, I'm going to continue where Jesse was talking about the fear. Uh, one of my children, I'm not going to mention by the name, just in case I'm embarrassing him. Okay. Uh, he did ayahuasca and he had a really bad trip. Really, really, really bad trip. And um, after I went and I did it, I knew I had to get him back to the medicine. And so um, that, that I had to get him back. So I'm in California and I'm trying to find a shaman, a local shaman, a shaman, because what happened was our shaman in Peru actually wound up getting a rare cancer, liver cancer. Oh, and he yeah. wow. and, um, and that's probably what happens when you do too many ayahuasca, and, <laughs> you know, uh, peyote. He was probably ready to go into the next dimension. He was, yeah. you know. So anyway, so um, I knew I had him back to the medicine i knew he had to confront it right so uh, he connects me with this shaman in california and i talked to this shaman secretary and she's the shaman's um california stunt woman and she's an actress and i'm laughing to myself i'm like oh this is like california wannabes you know right 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 uh, and I'm like, after coming and doing two weeks in Peru, well, that's where they created this, you know, to go and do it. This is a joke, you know, and I'm laughing, going, I'm not doing this. And a voice in my head, high self, yells at me and says that this is perfect for Cody. Cody is, oop, I said the name. Shit. Oops. <laughs> Listen, I'm sure he's not embarrassed. He's He told us some great stories, so. Yeah. yeah. So so anyway, so I said, you know, Cody is very loves fem feminine energy. You know, this would be great for Cody. So anyway, so I call Cody. I'm like, okay, yeah, and you want to go? We'll go to Costa Rica and do a weekend. And Cody says, okay. And I go and I book it. I pay for the tickets. I pay for everything. As it's getting closer, Cody's getting cold feet. Cody goes, close mm -hmm. me up. Ah, I can't go. 
I go, okay, baby. I said, but I can't get my money back and everything's paid for. I said, so if you change your mind, I'm going. So I was hoping as it got closer, Cody would change his mind and come. And the day before, Cody calls me up and Cody says, I, I'm going to come. And I'm like, yes. So the day comes, me and him are on the plane and Cody is freaking. He's shaking, he's sweating. And I'm just trying to like, you know, be scented for him. And now we got a three hour, we land in Costa Rica, we got a three hour drive to the place. And my mind, my voice in my head keeps going, this is gonna be good for Cody, it's gonna be perfect for Cody. He's gonna be around his element, you know, directors, you know, stunt people, this is Cody's world, he's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. So we get there and Cody's great. He's, you know, enjoying everyone's company and everything. And now we sit down for a ceremony. And ayahuasca ceremonies, usually what it is, they start in the evening and you have to wear all white so you could see, you know, usually so the shaman could see, you know, your chakras and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And um, you sit in a circle and um, you one by one, usually the shaman will do a prayer, a centering prayer. And um, one by one, you come up and you set your intentions and you drink the ayahuasca. And you sit back in your seat and you wait for the medicine to kick in. Now, ayahuasca is known for people vomiting. And usually it's relieving anything you want to get rid of. And in my case, I don't vomit. I, I vomit from the other end. I always wear adult diapers. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you can't embarrass Cody anymore. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so um, they won't sit Cody and I together because you could take on somebody else's energy. So I'm sitting across the room from Cody and I can't really see Cody. And um, I go and I drink the medicine and I'm like the third person. In, and it usually takes about 20 minutes for the medicine to kick in. And I'm sitting in my seat and all of a sudden I start freaking out. Like my head's going, this is going to be really bad. This is going to be bad. This is bad. This is bad. And I start freaking out. I start telling myself all these terrible negative things. And I'm like, quick, let's go to the bathroom and throw up the medicine before it kicks in. And I go to the bathroom and I got my fingers down my throat. I'm trying to throw it up and I can't throw it up. And I am panicking. I'm like, oh my God. This is going to be a terrible trip. Something terrible is going to happen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What did I do? And now I start begging to my ayahuasca. I'm like, uh, please, please. I changed my mind. I don't want to do the ceremony. Please, please, please. All of a sudden, my mind, like someone snapped me out of it and says, what, what are you doing? You're not afraid of anything. You're not a, afraid of ayahuasca. You're not. And now I start seeing eyeballs like popping up in the room. I'm like, oh my God, there's aliens in the room. Oh my God, oh my God. I'm not afraid of aliens. I don't, I like aliens. I don't, and I don't know where this is coming from. And now I don't want to be disrespectful to the medicine. And now I'm apologizing to her. I'm so sorry, Mother Ayahuasca. I don't know where this is coming from. I, I love you. I respect you. I'm not afraid of you. I'm so sorry. And she says to me, she said, this is coming from Cody. And I said, what? She goes, you're here for Cody, right? I said, yes. And she said, are you willing to take Cody's fear and pain? And I said, in a minute. And she said, okay. And she gave it to me. And then I spent the rest of the ceremony trying to get rid of Cody's fear. And wow. it was a gift. And I'm one of those people that believe everything and I believe nothing. Mm -hmm. so so I'm saying to myself, okay, did I imagine this? Or did she really give me Cody fear? Am I creating this in my mind? So wow. mid-ceremony, they go around and you get a talking to you. You're supposed to speak about what, you know, you you see. You know, right, you're right. It. So it came to me and I said, I kept it short. I didn't want to let it out, what I got, because I wanted to see if Cody actually got rid of his fear and I actually took it on. Right. So I said it was the best gift I could have got, and I pass on the stick. Out comes to Cody, and Cody is crying hysterical. And he was saying, he talked about that his, when he was in Peru and how terrified he was, and this was the first ceremony he was able to release his fear, and I just started crying. And it was like, oh, my God, this was the best gift 
I could have gotten. No, you don't want to go through the suffering. You would take suffering in a minute. Yeah. And I was honored to do that. Mm -hmm. But in that, I still now carry Cody's fear. And it's a lesson because I'm one of those people that aren't afraid of things. And right. now I feel fear. And now I understand what a lot of people go through. Wow, them. that's such an interesting way to, to look at the fact that you've now taken on fear and, and, and understanding why. That's, yeah, that's, it, that's amazing. It really, it, I, am, I have compassion for people who deal with this stuff on a daily basis. I never got it. I never understood that. Now I get it. So now when it comes, yeah. comes to me, I have to remind myself that this isn't my fear. This is Cody's. And I put it in a box. And I go, that's not mine. That's yours. That's it. That's, that's awareness, man. Being aware of those thoughts and what they are energetically and being like, all right, I can, I can give this more energy or I can put it away. Like, that's amazing. Such a great story. So we have some feedback. Carrie Ann is saying, oh, my God, that you were tapped into your child's energy. That is amazing, um, which it truly is. Um, uh, Steve Sage is saying you became an empath. I think you probably always were, but definitely <laughs> helped amplify that, you know, uh, trait. Uh, Tim says adult diapers. I was unsure about it, but now you definitely sold me. So, <laughs> so that's that's like a bonus for him, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jeff, Wait, I get to play act as an old man wearing adult diapers. Is my daughter and I both need to. Hey, do this you, you, together. I thank. For those, I was thankful about those diapers, and I gave them out to others. <laughs> <laughs> I really like oh, great! So amazing! What what a what an amazing story! And I think that's uh, Aunt Jilly saying beautiful, t telling your story, um, if I remember correctly from before. <laughs> um, Suzette, wow, really phenomenal! Yeah, can I ask some? Uh, can I hone it? You know, get to our hour mark here on uh, on the show. Oh wow! Can I hone in on it? A couple uh, things that I'd love to uh, get your uh, your answers for, Mom. Yes, baby. Um, so, um, you know, you, you talked about uh, carrying a lot of um, a lot of uh, sadness for your your family, and um, you know, losing your mom and your brothers. Um, did you walk away from these experiences having any new perspective on you know those that loss? Well, this is interesting. So I, being that I've had so many people die at me, die in my family and my friends on very young ages, I always carried this fear and this like, this fear about death. My fifth day of doing ayahuasca, on my fourth day, that's the, uh, when I went up to drink, I almost threw up on the shaman. And he said to me, you know what, Suzette? He said, don't drink. Tomorrow night, he said, "You know, I don't think you need it." And Mother Ayahuasca, after my third night, told me, "She said, there's not much I could teach you. There's not much I could tell you. You're done." So she told me, and, um, and then Don Howard said, "Don't drink." I said, "You know what? Okay, I'm not going to drink." So on my our fifth night, I went down and I said, "I'm going to be with my my peers and I'm going to support them," but and I brought earplugs so I wouldn't have to listen to them vomit. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to thank Mother Ayahuasca for all that, you know, she gave me and taught me and all the love and um, take a sip and go to sleep. So that's what I did. I went up, I thanked Mother Ayahuasca, you know, I gave her all my love and I took one sip and I went to go lay down and go to sleep. I put earplugs in my ears. I put an eye mask on my eye. I rolled up in my chair and I started to go to sleep and I didn't go to sleep. I died. And she pulled me out of my chair, and it was so weird. I'm looking at my skin suit laying on the chair, and I just thought flying through the universe, and I was dead. And I felt this unconditional love that I can't even explain it, because unless you feel it, you can't explain it. And this connection that we have within all, and I knew we were connected, but not on the level that I was feeling or being shown. I and love just hearing that being described. Yeah, keep going. Sorry. It was, it was just blew my mind. And I was, I don't want to come back. This love, this love was just so amazing. I was like, you don't need anything more than this love. I just want to stay here. 
in this love like place and I'm shooting all over the universe. It was amazing. And the ceremony was over and they I brought me back to my body. I came back and that has changed my whole outlook on death. Now I don't think that's the end. It's the beginning and death is a blessing. So now when people die, I go enjoy it. Enjoy this. That's an amazing oh wow. Ugh. And that was the strongest lesson she taught me. I think I think uh, I think Angela, he, who's here tonight, needs to hear that she she actually just said this. I've lost everyone in my family and others. I pray I get to be as strong as you are. And really, Angela, I mean, listen to what Suzette's saying. It's about perspective, and and I feel the same way. I think that is part of the the journey. I don't like using that word, but being aware it, and is part of being aware. I think is you drop that fear of death because you realize that it's it's. You're, you're closer to that connection of everything being connected than you are as a human being, because as a human being, you're kind of separated a little bit, right? We're all individuals. And we, you know. well, we think that's how ego is separating each other. Right. We're actually not. But we are, we like to look at ourselves as we're not the same as everyone, but we really are. And right. that, that's the thing when you do things like ayahuasca, you realize that we are, we are all connected on so many levels that we have no idea we are. Yeah. You because know, so there's, there's I got chills in, you know, and, and maybe this is a silly example, but, you know, you could say, uh, you know, did you hear, you know, that that uh, comedian, Eddie Izzard, he said, hail Hitler. And that's that's true. But then you get a little bit more information when you get more information. It changes your perspective. And they go, yeah, he was telling this joke and sort of the punchline of it was Hail Hitler. And maybe that doesn't fix anything at all. But then all of a sudden you understand that, oh, wait, he was making fun of Hitler and, you know, because of this thing and that thing. And mm -hmm. it was just sort of encapsulating the joke. It was funny for him to say Hail Hitler. Right. So that was perspective. Yeah, perspective. Yeah. And, and that's really the thing of like, you can know a thing. And then all of a sudden you get one more piece of information that colors and completely changes your view of the thing. And honestly, that's, you know, that would be my, my next question for you, mom, is um, as somebody who had, uh, you know, a pretty stark interpretation of you know, drugs and psychedelics, you know, from your personal experience, you know, whether it was your mother or friends and family members who were drinking and whatever, you know, I'm sure that that this working with the plant medicine must have uh, radically altered the way you viewed such things. Can you tell me? Uh, how you came out of that first experience, you know, especially uh, I know you were earmuffs, you know, you didn't want to hear exactly what it was that you were doing. So now you've done these two weeks and you're heading home and you're reflecting on what you just did, which is kind of flies in the face of so much of the way that you've lived your life. I know very much so you see what a different thing it is working with the plant medicine. But what, what were you thinking? How, how, how was your perspective transformed from working with ayahuasca that's a good question uh yeah well i do mushrooms now <laughs> <laughs> i've been microdosing every day you don't have you don't have to tell us everything <laughs> but I, i'm i'm psyched to know that that's I, I'm, I'm trying to get a confession out of her but i'm still not spoken pot uh you know i um you know uh i i I, when I was growing up, I had a lot of friends who, you know, did all kinds of drugs, did acid, did LSD, did, you know, so I believe everything in moderation, like even Don Howard. Don Howard died of, I'll tell you a funny story about Don Howard before I switch this. So he was a shaman. Right? Shaman's name is Don Howard, right? So that's what I thought his name was. I go down to Peru and I'm calling him Don, Donnie. Hey, Donnie, how's it going? And apparently he was on Joe Rogan's show and they called him the White Wizard. And so apparently he's a big deal. I didn't know any better. So he would walk in the room and everyone would get quiet. No one would talk to him. And he'd literally be sitting there by himself eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So first of all, he was only one that was close to my age, I'd go and sit with him. I'd be like, hey, Donnie, how's it going? And we would talk and we would laugh and blah, blah, blah. I go home and I find out 
that's not his name. It's his title. He's a Don. <laughs> I thought it was his name. And I was calling him Donnie. Who the hell knew? Donnie. <laughs> Donnie, Donnie the Don. And how, how funny is it that that's like also used in the mafia, right? Right. So, um, but anyway, he winded up dying from a rare liver cancer. Now, he does these ceremonies all the time. Ayahuasca is known for like, uh, you know, healing a lot of things. And I have a theory on that, which is something I've never read or nobody told me, but this is a theory. Ayahuasca opens up your chakra system and your chakras run every system in your body, every organ. Okay. So if you have an organ that is shut, that organ's not going to run properly. And you do ayahuasca, it opens up those chakras that are allowing those organs to work. And I think that's one of the reasons why ayahuasca heals a lot of, you know, problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he winded up dying of this rare liver disease. I think it's from filtering all these, um, you know, med plant medicines through his liver. I don't um, think doing too much of anything is good for people. I think everything in moderation. I, I agree. Do, that's a great. That's a great thing. I, I can't imagine doing ayahuasca every night. You know? Can you imagine? Oh, you don't want to do ayahuasca. Every night. <laughs> you really don't. And that's one of those things. Those are not a medicine that you go. That's a cool high. Right. You, you feel sick. You you feel like you got the stomach virus. You don't feel good. It's not a good experience. Right. So, um, you know, I still think that you know you have not everyone could do these medic medicines like if you don't stay on the dieta if you do ayahuasca you could die from it wow. and you you got to be cautious and i know they're talking about legalizing a lot of things and right now lsd and mushrooms and all kinds of things are really good for all kinds of brain you know damage and you know, PSD, and I'm all for that, but I definitely think that it should be in a supervised setting. I don't think that people should be going out and drinking ayahuasca by right. themselves in the woods. Right. So, you know, I, I, I believe that there's got to be some caution to it. And of course, maybe it's my age. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, you know, Cody and I have this conversation all the time. And I keep telling Cody, you got to be careful what you tell people. Right. And they, there's a responsibility behind that. And, Absolutely. You know, and and not it's not to everyone. All these well, things are to everyone. I yeah, I think fortunately, all the stories that I've heard about it, people do approach it very responsibly. People look for shaman to guide them through a ceremony. People aren't looking for, hey, you got any ayahuasca? You know, it's, it's, well, it's, it's it seems funny. to be. You know, I, 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 to add to that, you know, and, and you know, as you say, you know, you're the, the age and, uh, you know, some, some youth talking. You know, I, I was going to a shaman in California that, that my mom didn't exactly approve of because she had heard a lot of negative things about him. And honestly, he was not the greatest shaman. He used to say at the beginning of the ceremonies, basically, that if it goes bad and you're having a bad trip, don't worry, you'll wake up in the morning. <laughs> And whenever he would say that, I was just sort of like mortified. <laughs> like yeah. I would start like whispering to the people, like, "All right, place." Did anybody ever not wake up? <laughs> have a good idea about a thing. And you know, while I think I, I really do think that what she's saying is very true, but the, the true part of it is about having a responsible intention yourself, and that you are not taking for granted what it is that you are doing. Right. what you're about to interact with and the level of sort of um, uh, teaching and, and mastery that, that you have on your plate when you take ayahuasca to do it in any fashion. And, and the same goes with mushrooms and, and even cannabis, right. you know, uh, you, you, like that you're knowing that I can choose to fall and trip around on the floor and throw up in a pile of my own vomit, or I can choose to recognize that this is a vessel to enlightenment, to true consciousness, and that I care about that and I want to get the most from it that I can. And I think anybody who goes in with that sort of level of respect, like, you know, my mom was talking about even when she's sitting there going, I'm so afraid. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I was afraid. I shouldn't have been afraid. No, we, we don't have to be afraid. And, and, and but, but we do have to have a proper um, idea 
about the the sort of peace of God that we're going to allow to reflect on our souls and take that very seriously. And I think anybody right. who goes into the experience taking it with its proper weight of what it is that you're really doing and what you can accomplish from an experience with these things, you know, doesn't really have to worry about the rest, you know, well, but it comes down to personal discipline. You're missing one thing. Sure. That when you do things like ayahuasca, your, your soul is very open. I totally believe in lower vibrational beings. I, I, I believe in that. Mm -hmm. I am always worried that when I'm open like that, some a, a negative force that I don't want is going to come in. And they, they look for that. Mm -hmm. And that's what a shaman is supposed to do. They're supposed to protect you from that. Right, right. And that's what you're looking for in a shaman, to make sure you're protected in a safe space. Right. So you can, you know, evolve as a human. Right. We have yeah. a question we have. Is it dangerous to take plant medicine at 65 years old? Before anyone answers, I just want to say we are not medical doctors. We are just human beings with experiences. So uh, I personally think sure. <laughs> but uh, what do you think, Suzette? I'm 61. And Don Howard was, I think he was 65. Okay. And uh, so I would say no. And, uh, you know, for me, I worry. This is why I'm doing microdosing mushrooms. I'm worried about my memory. I'm worried about destroying my, my brain cells. When my mom died and my brother died, I was on Ambien for like three years. Mm -hmm. And it really messed my brain up. Wow. And I've been trying to rebuild it. And these things can rebuild your brain. So yeah. you're you're all for the organic, and that's and now I can see the 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 connection to the plant medicine part of it. It's more, it's more organic. It's nature. It's part of, you know, if you look at nature, everything exists in in coexistence and for a reason, right? It's like the human being that screwed everything up. Side story: the other day, he was telling me that he was looking to get a prescription for heartburn. So I said to him, instead of getting a prescription for heartburn. Why don't you figure out what the where the heartburn's coming from instead of masking it with a prescription? And that this is the thing is that we mask out illnesses with a pharmaceutical. Mm. So it's Wait, that, we're gonna have a conspiracy theory episode. Do you want to join us for that one? <laughs> no, I don't like conspiracy. To me, that's lower vibrational information. Well, I, I, and I, I, I don't go down that road. I just met, you, you started talking about pharmaceutical co companies, so I just that's all I have. Nobody even has to have that conversation because right. we all know they're all, you know, they're all out for the money. We know that. You heard it from Suzette. Yeah, they're all out for the money. Totally. Yeah, we. we I. I didn't mean to to divert the conversation. I do have a question though. This 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 whole thing made me made me want to ask you a question. So, is there a difference? I understand that ayahuasca connected you to the universe and to deeper things and to everybody else and and kind of change your perspective in a lot of ways i'm imagining that kind of before i don't know what your relationship is was with things like uh psychic mediums and astrology and things like that but is there a difference in how you perceive those oh i was always a big believer on that oh, okay my, even previously my brother that was murdered uh the fbi wasn't telling us anything. Mm -hmm. And I got a meeting with George Anderson in New York. Oh. And uh, he pretty much, it was a really crazy experience because uh, um, George doesn't look at you. He doesn't talk to you. Tell, always, tell, tell people who George Anderson is because not he's a, a psychic medium. And okay, he, pretty he, famous, yeah. He's very famous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, he um, he's, he's incredible. And if, He's the one I started my spiritual journey on. I read his first book. But anyway, when I met him, he was very creepy. Mm -hmm. And um, I instantly didn't like him because he doesn't look at you. He doesn't talk to you. You're mm -hmm. like, you don't exist. And he starts the reading and he tells you not to talk. And his eyes roll over the back of his head and he just moves his pen around. And my family, all my family came through. I had like 25, 30 people in the room. My, wow. My, my mother, my 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 grandparents, my friends, everybody was in the room. And they're all talking about that they were come the person I was coming to see, my brother was a newbie and they, he was having a hard time finding his way there. Well okay. anyway, my brother steps into the room and my brother had a real sarcastic personality and we were very close. And um 
we start fighting. I'm fighting with a ghost in the room and I'm screaming at him. And George Anderson is talking to him, but it's my brother's, the way my brother's personality. And I'm going at him back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> wow. I leave that room. I'm, I'm angry. I want to kill somebody. I'm so pissed. I like, that was a waste of $2,000. Why was I wasting my time? I was a mess. Now, meanwhile, Dee was recording it. So D, we come home and I'm like, I'm so pissed. And they didn't tell us anything. And um, D subscribed the whole thing and D hands it to me and he says, You said you don't want to read this. He transcribed, he wrote every word down. Yeah, he wrote every down, he went through the tape, he wrote everything down. And he said, um, you don't want to read this. And I read it and I just start crying because Vinny says everything about the murder, how he takes he says wow. He was doing, and it was he was committing suicide without breaking his. his wow, you had said that earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was wow. insane. And at the end of the trial, the trial I think happened five years later or something like that. I handed the booklet to the FBI agent, and I said, "Read this." And he read it, and he was like, "Holy shit!" I said, "A psychic told me that." <laughs> That's amazing! Holy moly! And it, I didn't know facts of the case until I sat in the jury room and I heard it from witnesses because, you know, they weren't telling us anything. That's amazing. And you it seems like you knew at the time, like you said, your brother wasn't going to break his promise to you, but he made it so he can kind of do what he wanted and still keep his promise to you. Yeah, it was yeah that, that's yeah. crazy. Suzette, I can't, let me tell you, I had some amazing respect for the entire Snyder family before you were the only one that I hadn't really talked to. Although I did meet you on Cody's set when he was shooting a video of a band at, in some place, there was a lot of bugs and D came by and you were there. Uh, I, we met briefly, but I've worked with them all and man, I just, my respect for the Snyder family just went up. You are amazing person to talk to. You have lived an incredible life. Um, I'm looking forward to your book. You know what? I didn't even think about this. We usually promote. Do you have a website? Does your mom have no, a website? I totally. Jesse sent me a thing and asked me if I wanted to put it on my Instagram. <laughs> posted on social media since COVID. And well, we, what, we appreciate you being here. I, you know, COVID hit and so many people are suffering. And we have such an incredible life. And I said, I'm not posting pictures. I'm me in my house in Belize and Dee and I doing this. And Dee, I'm not doing that. I said, I can't, I just can't. I, 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 I just can't do it. And I, you know, that's what all the Instagram and stuff is. It's all things to make other people feel like they don't have a bunch yeah, of You know what? And, and that's interesting you say that because I agree with you a million percent. There's a definite contingency of, people living through out of ego on social media and it's all about it's all about ego but but i will say this platform you know this right here what we're doing we're bringing connection back we're bringing conversation back people are listening to the conversation responding and and enjoying what you're saying and you know listening to us and we've been doing this i've been really enjoying it i've been antisocial for years and now I go out and I look at every person, just like you said, with this unconditional love. And I just like, I want to meet them and talk to them and say, Hey, how, how are you doing? And a lot of times if they're sad, I want to make them not sad, you know? It's yeah. Like, yeah. You know? It's passionate. And then, you know, and that, that is what I want. If, so uh, Cody and I, Cody was down in Belize. We have a house in Belize and we're on the water and we're doing a mushroom ceremony and um, I'm crying to mother mushroom. And I'm like, there's so many people suffering in this world. Please help them. Help these people that are suffering. Mm. And he says to me, all they have to do is turn around. And I'm crying. I'm like, please help them. And I turn around. And she goes, all they have to do is turn around. Everything they need is right there. And right. I turn around, I'm like, you're right. And then I start dancing for everyone. And I'm like, <laughs> I love life. Life is amazing. It's just, it's just a different perspective, you know? Just really take okay. your from sorrow and then also go, yes, everything I need is right there. I just have to see it. Just open my eyes and see it. Totally. Totally. That's amazing. Well, I'm still waiting. I feel like everything I need is that invitation to Belize and a mushroom ceremony. So, <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah, so I mean, we're we're here at the end of the show, and Mom, I want to say thank you so much. We've been trying to get you onto uh, the live stream of consciousness for a while. I'm so glad that we finally were able to have you. You have indeed helped many people here today, and this will live on on our YouTube channel. And um, you know, for anybody who uh, you know, because I I think you know, as you were speaking of the various you know health benefits that so many people were there for really heavy and serious reasons. I, I know that really sparked with a lot of people in the chat and, um, you know, a will in the future spark with people. Absolutely. Do you have anything that you would say uh, as a last thought uh, to anybody who is on the, that place where they're, they're thinking that they could really benefit from, you know, a visit with mother ayahuasca or, you know, dabbling in some micro mi micro dosing or something like that. What, what would you say to somebody who's, who's not quite sure? Okay, so uh, I, I bring I bring a lot of people to the medicine now, and um, and usually they tell me I'm afraid I'm afraid to go, and then I say I'll go with you, and I tell everyone you got to go with love in your heart, and that's all that matters. You go with love. You give her love, she will give it back to you. And the best part about Mother Ayahuasca, you know, she's a spirit, but I would view her as a god, and she talks to you. And if you tell her you're frightened or you tell her it's too much, she will take it down. And she'll only give you what you need. And she she's amazing. I I I, I love this 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 spirit. I love her. But you've got to find a good shaman. Do not do this on your own. That's a hard thing to do. How do you once you're in this world, how do you find a good shaman? And I don't really know how to recommend doing that it's just um the circle of people but yeah, research. Yeah, research well you know even peru there's a lot of bad shamans down in peru right and um you know peru is was my my trip down to Peru was way more difficult than my trip in california but yeah. i would say you got to go with an open heart and do not listen to anybody else's stories everybody is different and if you go there with an open loving heart and you are going there for a good cause, that's what she'll give you. And I, I recommend it to everyone. But now look, my husband is a non-believer mm -hmm. and I've been working on him for years and he's not budging. So it is definitely not for everyone. Well, um, you know, I, I think um, I'm super intrigued by it. I, you know, I've taken mushrooms. I've done my own experimenting and, and working with the plant medicine. Um, but Mother Ayahuasca hasn't called me specifically, although, again, I'm intrigued as hell by all of the stories. I think you never know. One day, D might wake up and have had a dream, <laughs> and Mother Ayahuasca was there in his dream, and uh, he'll just wake up and say, honey, you know who's in my dream? <laughs> I, I definitely had a calling. I mean, I definitely think... Yeah, I, I think it's 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 that kind of, that's what I believe. I believe it's an energetic calling in connection to it. Um, I don't know if you saw as you were talking, because we're getting a lot of uh, comments, but everybody's saying what a great show and thanking you for sharing your truth and, and your love and your story. Um, and again, I can't tell you how much of a pleasure this has been. Yes. Thank you, mom. And I'd love to double down on, on, on what she said there. I mean, everything that she just said, I mean, go back and listen again as, as the right advice uh, for the mentality to go in with ayahuasca. And I would just say uh, doubly so. Uh, you are dealing with a benevolent force. I see often when people are kind of having a, a bad experience, it's almost like somebody said something to them out of love, but they couldn't handle it. And they react like they did this to hurt me. Right. And, you know, just understanding that you are dealing with a, an infinite spirit that is just infinite love and, and it wants to help you. And whatever it might show you as scary or frustrating or hard as it might be or whatever experience you might have as scary or difficult or hard as it might be, it's all to your benefit. And if you do say this is too much for me, please, you know, if you are kind to the spirit, it's trying to be kind to you. Right. And, um, you know, and, and I have seen people get humbled by the spirit of ayahuasca when they don't take a humble approach and appreciate the level of love that is is being attempted to be given to them. So I uh, really just everything she said is just like. Right. Oh, and Shane was here too. Shane says, "Way to go, mom." Yeah, mom. 
<laughs> awesome. Well, I, well, I guess we're wrapping it up. Um, yeah, this was amazing. Thank you so much, Mother. I don't want to go. I want to. I want to keep talking to you that all night. Again. In the future, I know this was hard for you, and it always. I don't do things like this. I don't. This is my first podcast, and probably my last. But I just like <laughs> Mom, we'll get you again. <laughs> Uh, that means even much more to me, Suzette. Seriously, it does. Thank you so, so much. I'm super humbled by your presence here. Um, and, and everybody else I know thanks you. So yeah. Thanks Rock so on. Um, I so appreciate it. And thank you, everybody else who has joined us on another fabulous episode of the live stream of consciousness. Yes, yeah, stick around, Suzette. We're gonna talk to you later. Okay. Peace.